Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to do simple or basic compositing for beginners. I get a lot of questions, people that haven't worked with layers yet, people that are new to Photoshop and just don't know how easy it is to put two or more images together. So that's exactly what this tutorial is going to be. It's going to be hopefully kind of short um, because it's not a lot to it just to get your feet wet on compositing and uh, putting images together. So the first thing I like to do is in Photoshop, what I'm going to do is create my background or create my document. Now your background could be one of the images you're going to open up. And I'm going to work with these two wedding images that I have over here in my uh, CC library. But I want to make sure they're going to be on the finished print size. So let's go up to the file menu, choose new. When I choose new, it's going to ask me uh, what size do I want. I'm going to just create a regular default Photoshop size. Uh, and we're, we can pick a paper size, by the way. So I can say US paper. Um, I'm going to make sure that this is 10 inches by 8 inches. So 8 by 10 on its side. So a landscape 10 by 8 at 300 pixels per inch. Uh, once I click OK, that will just go ahead and create that white canvas for me. And now what I want to do is bring in my first image. Now, you can bring in your first image a couple of different ways. You can go up to File and open an image. You can double click on an image on your desktop and open it. Uh, but like I said, I've got my images over here stored in my library. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring in that first image, just drag and drop. Now, when I drag and drop over the first image, it'll come over and it's in a mode called free transform. So this bounding box around it is letting me pick it up and move it around. It's letting me size it. It's letting me put it anywhere on the canvas I want. So I'm going to back it up to the right a little bit. And it's already the right height, so I don't have to do any sizing. Now I'll just hit the enter key or just click this on screen check mark to commit to it. All right, so that's our first image, and that creates a layer right here on the layers panel. So that brought in that image and put it on its own layer. And, and now what I'd like to do is bring in the second image, because again, this is all about compositing. So the second image is the exact same bride, but in this shot, she's actually looking to, the, to our left. She's looking to her right. Um, in this case, it's also a little shorter, and what I'd love to do is composite this so she's facing herself, but slightly ghosted out. So I'm going to go ahead and just, first of all, get the size down. I'm going to hold down my shift key, grab this bottom right-hand corner, and scale it up. We'll get the size just right. Once I get the size right, oops, hang on. I didn't mean to, hang on, let's undo that. I did a mistake. Let's do it again. That happens. I didn't mean to commit to it. I wasn't finished yet. So let's go ahead and scale it one more time. And before I commit, I'm going to leave the free transform on. So if you bring in your image and it doesn't have free transform, just hit Command T on the Mac or Control T on Windows to bring up this free transform bounding box. Uh, once you've got the free transform bounding box, you can do multiple operations. So I scaled it and I had committed to it, but I wasn't finished because I also want to flip it. So I'm going to right click right anywhere on the bounding box and flip horizontal. That'll flip it back the other way. So now she's actually going to be looking at herself. So now we'll go ahead and back the image up a little bit more. We don't need as much of that wall. We'd rather have more image. And in this case, now I've got her ultimately in the right position, ultimately looking at herself. And of course, now I've got everything where I want. I can commit to it. Um, but in this case, we can't see her. We can't see the original image because this is another layer that's now been put on top. So what I want to do instead, first and foremost, we can lower the opacity. We can just bring down the opacity of this layer. Not that much. <laughs> Maybe something more like that. So we can see her. Uh, but, the, when, but when we do that, that enables us to be able to lower the opacity, kind of ghost her in the background to see her. But it's also ghosting all the way over to the right-hand side. And that's what we don't want. Also, the hands look a little jumbled up because both images are holding the bouquet. And um, we see fingers going in both directions. And that doesn't look cool either. So while we've got the opacity lowered, 
The next thing I want to do is mask out the other section of this image that I don't need. And that's what masking is for or the mask layer or the mask option is for for your layer. So down here on your uh, layers panel, there is a mask icon. I can just go ahead and click it and that will add a mask to the layer that you're on. So that little white box on the layers panel is your mask. Once that mask is there, then you can switch to your paintbrush. Make sure your default color or your foreground color is black. And if it wasn't black, let's say it was, uh, here we'll pick a color. Let's, let's make a different color just so you can see the example. Let's say it was some other color. What you could do is just hit the uh, letter D and that will default to white and black. And then you can just flip it over. Uh, just hit the little rounded arrow there to switch it to black. Now that you've got a black color, black is going to mask or hide part of the image and white would reveal. So that way you're not erasing pixels, you're hiding pixels. So this way I can just go in and hide that ghosted image on the right hand side, but still keep it on the left hand side. I can ghost out the hands ghost out the or, or mask out the other bouquet mask out the other hands and just keep the one that I want so now we end up with our image of our bride looking at herself on her special day there we go so just a simple masking technique here in Photoshop CC uh, with two layers, and of course you can keep building on this, maybe put the, put the groom somewhere in here, just adding another layer and masking out the parts of the layer that you don't need. Just like that. And of course if we go too far, oh no, I'm cutting out her arm, I don't want that, then what we could do is just simply sw either undo or switch back to white, and what white will do is restore. So this way we're restoring that part of the image back. So that's masking on or off, depending on what you're doing. So um, that's a simple technique. Again, we can add text now. We, uh, for, so for example, uh, let's give her a name. We don't know her name. This is a stock image. But if we click our text tool and pick a color, Let's go ahead, we can either pick a color that we want or even sample a color that's right here in the image. So I can sample that nice purple color in the flower and then we can go ahead and type. I have no idea what font this is in, um, but her name is gonna be Janet for now. And we're just gonna select Janet and we can even go in and choose a different font. And there's a font that I really like for this kind of stuff. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, da, 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 da. I may, yeah, there it is. Pick'em Script Pro, which is a great script font. And if I want that larger, I can then go in and just uh, using the control panel, I can scrub it larger and put it in place. So adding text is just as easy as what we just did. You can, now it's a layer. You can use your move tool, move it around, put it wherever we want. Um, and that's simple, easy compositing in Photoshop CC. Uh, very easy to do. Drag and drop your layers, move them around, mask them, do whatever you want. So with that, that's our tutorial. Take care, and we'll catch you on the next one.